Okay, so you bitch, they snitch. The White House has got you on a list. It almost sounds like an enemy's list, although this White House says it is nothing like that Nixon White House brought down 35 years ago this very weekend. I mean, man, it's been that long. That was then very different now because now President Obama and friends merely want to know what half-truths and lies are being passed around as fact on this whole health care reform thing and whether you know any Fox News anchors in compromising positions. No, they didn't ask that, but you can bet they're thinking it. Anyway, what is the difference between gathering news and spying then? My next guest fears not much. Citizens for the Republic president, Diana Bannister, says all of this is disturbing. So on many levels, Diana, you'd, you'd think that whether it's informational or not, it leads to some problems, right? Yes, it does, Neil. And you can bet you're on the list, I'm afraid. Just being on Fox is... is uh, excuse enough for the White House to have you on their list, but it is disconcerting when the town hall meetings are meant for people to go and express their interests, their grievances to their elected officials. That's what this country was based on. How is it that a federal entity of the government, the White House, is collecting names, asking people to snitch on their neighbors to tell them if there's some kind of nefarious activity going on behind the scenes? It's quite extraordinary, and I'm, I'm not quite sure it's legal. Now, we talked to a number of lawyers who are split minds on, on that legal issue. I'm not a lawyer, but I, they, they lost me on that. But it just see, I go by the smell test, and this smells awful. And, and part of it is because if you can't counter what are some of the more popular arguments against your health care package, whether real or imagined, then you're in a heap of trouble. If you need a bunch of emails to confirm what, what, what the problems are, then maybe that's the problem. But leaving, exactly. that, leaving that aside, uh, I, I could see the Democratic National Committee or any national committee you know, doing this, but it, it's a whole other use of power when a government entity is doing it, isn't it? It actually reeks of the Soviet empire. It reeks of someone like a dictatorship like Hugo Chavez or Saddam Hussein collecting information about their own citizens for what purpose? That's what it has to get down to. You have to remember, Neil, this is the same administration who, a few months ago, Homeland Security memo that said anyone who's opposed to abortion or illegal immigration should be ex considered an extremist. Is that really what we want our government official to do? I don't think the American people elected Barack Obama to do something like this. They didn't think he was capable of it. I think this reeks of Chicago-style politics. You're collecting, I mean, if you're talking about the Nixon administration, his, uh, his enemies list, John Dean said in particular they were going to use the apparatus of the federal government to seek out his enemies and to destroy his political enemy, enemies. I don't think that's what the American people elected Barack Obama to do. You know, Diana, I mean, here we are on the 35th anniversary of the Nixon resignation. And one thing as I've been looking yeah. back at the history of that, um, when you're very convinced of the virtue of your ways, you see almost anyone opposed to them as being without yes. virtue or worse, satanic. And, and certainly the way this particular administration has handled criticism, uh, be it from you know, Fox News or relegating those who have tea parties to being uh, yes. rough, crude, sexual innuendo jokes. Um, and now with the health care criticism, I, I, if you really believe what you're doing is right, almost all criticism is relegated to uh, being not only wrong, but uh, not virtuous and not in keeping with what is decent for America. So it sort of justifies what you're thinking. That, that's, right. that's screwed up. Isn't it? That is very disconcerting, especially from a man who, who based his political career on being a community organizer. If this is all these people are doing, they're going to their members of Congress to explain their grievances. That is uh, the American way. And it's, it reeks of the fact that I think the president and Nancy Pelosi and Democrats in Congress have lost the message on health care. The more the American people find out about it, the more concerned they are, and the more they want to talk to their members about it, find out what's really in this bill. Unfortunately, most of them don't know because they haven't read it. We, we're working with Let Freedom Ring, right. who started this Read the Pledge um, for members of Congress to just read the bill. Let's find out what's in it. Let's not try and push it through too fast. I think people are very scared of a federal government wanting to take over any kind of entity. But, but it yet really they're deemed does... to be part of a cabal. Diana, very, very yes. good uh, perspective on this. Thanks. I want to see you back. But thank you very much. Diana Bannister. Great to be 